Did I mention how much I hate wiring? Got it in three main parts. Stuff going back to the coil and the stator. Stuff that goes to the uh, switch button up here. And the stuff that goes to the CDI, rectifier, fuse box, things like that. Once I get it all sorted out, I'll rewrap everything. Simplified pretty good. To leave it all hanging. I want to try to get it all hooked up. Make sure everything works. Go back in and cleaning it up and taping it all. I'm going to try to get a signal for these headlights. For these blinkers, front and rear. Tail light, got the horn right there. I will add a starter button. It's a very tedious process. Nothing. Turn the key on. Blinker. Yeah, that's working. Good. Cool. At this point, I've completely eliminated the ECU. Got high beams, low beams, left and right blinkers, brake switch, brake switch, temporary start switch, horn, no fuel pump, rear brake lights, rear blinkers, the CDI box, and the coil. Well, we're good. Now I can shorten all these wires, cut them to length, um, replace the shitty ones with good ones. Let's test it again, and then wrap it. It's starting to look like a real wiring harness. Brake switch and start switch. And the rest of this all goes to the back. It's going to run on the left side of the bike instead of the right side like a mad dog. We'll go into our coil and our stator back here. Well, should I send this to AliExpress and show them what a pipe should look like? They can start making the right size for a Bergman. Yeah, you got the extension. Getting this pipe to fit in there is going to take some work. That'll go on right there. This will all come out through here. Then this will fit onto here. I'm going to leave that O2 bung on there. I ended up putting an AFR on this thing. It says it holds 1,900 milliliters. 946, I put this whole quart in here. The dipstick's broken, so I'm just making up how far down I should measure it. I'm going with right there. I just want some cheap oil in there to start it up. Then once I run it, I'm going to drain it, and then I'll measure out 1,900 milliliters and put in there. Ah, the oil registered. There it is. Over a quart low. Maybe it's got a hell of a leak in it. Don't see any oil coming out of there. If you don't change this oil and measure it, there's pretty much nothing you can do but just overflow it until it pours out that hole. And it should drip out that hole. Then you know it's full. I'm just gonna use a phone for my speeds. I, mean, I like these speedometers. I got the old school one on here. I kind of like it. Honestly, just a phone works so well. The only two gauges I really want, the tachometer and some kind of temperature. I'm gonna go with water temperature. I'd really like to know the RPMs. The temperature gauge for the water will let me know if the pump's working. It'll let me know if that thermostat's working. It'll also let me know if this little radiator and this fan are keeping up. Now it came with a temp switch on the side of the motor right here. It goes to the computer and then from the computer, it goes into the instrument cluster. I found good wiring diagrams on this bike but nothing that shows what happens after that computer and into that instrument cluster so i have no idea which wires are which and there's hundreds of them going in there so i found a temp switch on ebay it goes in line on your hoses it's only 20 bucks so why mess with this thing i think i'm gonna get rid of that temp switch and use the ebay one same with the tachometer one of those wires goes to the tachometer from the ground side of this ignition coil. And I don't know which one it is. So I'm just going to put a new tachometer on it. I'm going to get little flat digital ones. And they're 20 bucks a piece. I, that's cheaper than trying to troubleshoot it. Start button came in. That's way better. Fat axle spacers came in. I put these red things on there to kind of hide the extra threads like I talked about. They look pretty cool. That way you don't see the big old ugly thread sticking out because the axle's way too long. It ends up going to a single light on the back. Kind of matches the exhaust pipe. I actually started it up. I was going to video the first start, but it took so long to figure it out. It was just crazy. I had forgot, like I always say, to get control of that slide with your idle before you mount it. The idle was way out here. I had to turn it in about 10 turns to even get control of the slide. So it was not going to start off that pilot jet. Now, typically, I'll start a bike off the main jet. I'll just hold the throttle open, get it started, and then lower the RPM till I can get control of it with the idle. But with these CVT transmissions, pretty scary. I should have videoed that white one going through the wall almost and knocking over my drill press i started that one on the throttle and it took off on me but this one's got a center stand so i can do it but i couldn't get it started on the throttle either once i finally got control of that slide and i got it started in idle i realized that's because if i just breathe on that throttle or touch it it kills the bike so we can see if we can start it here see what it sounds like it sounds pretty cool you hear the fuel pump going started it up it leaks brake fluid it leaks fuel it leaks radiator fluid and it leaks oil so i think that's everything so it leaks all of them
ready to die. If I get it more than that, it just shuts off. The jet that was in there, freaking huge. It's not marked and has no numbers on it anywhere. I don't know if you can see through there, but that's it sitting next to a 140 on the right, and that's it on the left. So that thing is way big, maybe like a 180. Hell, who knows? I'm going to try uh, something really small, like a 110 or something, just to get it running good. But now let's see what happens when I give it gas. I put that little teeny jet in there, so it should work. Power's right up. Yeah, is the timing not advancing? I mean, we've made this thing up with this CDI here. It's pretty, uh, pretty ghetto. Before I go too crazy, I need to verify all the things that can make an engine backfire and ping and pop and things like that. Valve timing, valve lash, and I probably need to uh, lean out that pilot jet. Who knows if this engine's been taken apart and put together wrong. I've seen it before. Another jet with no markings, weird. Kick it off with a 38. That should be nice and lean for this big of a bike. There's TDC. My valves are adjusted. So if you haven't seen my CDI video, I'm about to blow your mind. These magic boxes, CDIs, computers, they're not that magic. They're actually pretty simple. What happens is, inside here we have a flywheel going around. There's a pickup sensor. The pickup sensor tells the CDI, or whatever it is, when we're at top dead center. Put a... TDC here. Someone has to mechanically weld a little tab on top of this. It's usually a little piece of metal or something like that that this electromagnetic pulsar can detect when it passes over. It's just a magnet. It'll send a signal to the CDI when we hit top dead center. It tells a spark plug to fire on the compression stroke. We're going to generate electricity. On that fourth turn, we're going to come around and fire it. So the CDI knows what RPM this engine's going because of how often this thing hits the sensor. It also knows when it's at top dead center. And that's all it knows, because the welder that put this tab on here told it that's top dead center. It doesn't know what direction it's going. The problem with having this tab at top dead center is when it hits actual top dead center, and there's your sensor, by the time the signal goes to the CDI box, and the CDI box takes the stored electricity from the three previous turns on an AC system or to the battery on a DC system. And then it sends that electricity to the coil and the coil to the plug. And then the plug fires, the engine has already moved. You tell it to happen here, the engine's about right there when that spark actually fires. We've got retarded ignition timing and that won't work. That's the reason we have timing advance built into everything. So what the welder does, the mechanical advance, he doesn't weld that little tab here. He welds it over here somewhere before top dead center. So everything over here is before top dead center. It's going to come around and happen up here before top dead center actually happens. So the welder is going to weld the tab right here. Say, hey, I'm at top dead center before he's at top dead center. It's going to send the information. The engine is going to keep turning. By the time it gets to the spark plug, it sparks right at top dead center and the world's great. Everything's perfect. Bam, it happened. So that's advanced timing. The problem with this system is as the RPMs increase, we need more timing advance. Typically, your timing from top dead center, you want 10 degrees for idle, and then you want about 34 degrees when you're probably 3,000 RPM and above. As the engine speeds up, that signal is slower and slower compared to the engine. As the engine is going real fast, we need to tell it to spark way ahead of time. We need to tell it to spark in here somewhere. So by the time it gets to top dead center, it fires when the pistons on the compression stroke all the way to the top. To make that happen, we need to move this tab mechanically. So now we got to weld it over here while we're riding. I think it's pretty tough. Change this tab while we're riding. A vacuum advance does that. A vacuum advance, you can you can mechanically move something. But this is a capacitor discharge ignition or TCU, CDI, ECU, ECM. All these are the same. We can't move this tab. And here's the kicker. These electronics can't electronically advance this for us. We can't tell it, hey, the signal's here. This is where it's happening. You're a computer. You tell the spark to happen at 34 degrees advance from where top dead center is. You would think a computer could do that, but it can't. Because we're coming up to 34 degrees advance, the computer has no idea we're here. The event doesn't happen till here, till top dead center. If the event hasn't happened, we can't move the event to the future. It's like time travel. We can only travel to the past. The paradox is we can't move to the future because it hasn't happened yet. Once the event happens, the computer can hold that event for an amount of seconds or milliseconds or whatever it would be and then release the event. So it can delay spark, but it can't advance spark. Because you see these CDIs, they advertise they have a spark advance of 34, 
things like that. So how do you electronically advance an ignition? You have your welder weld that tab way out here. So mechanically, we're gonna advance this thing let's say 90 degrees. That's a ton of advance. As this rolls around, the sensor hits it and says, boom, I'm at top dead center, even though I'm 90 degrees from top dead center. Since the CDI can delay spark, we delay it the amount we want to get to 34. The computer holds the information for 56 degrees. Now, 56 degrees is just a mathematical derivative of how fast this is spinning in the amount of seconds. So it's gonna hold it for an amount of time. It's gonna hold it for this amount of time till 56 degrees happens, and then it's gonna release it to the coil. The coil is going to fire at 34 degrees before top dead center. That's how electronic ignition works. So here's the issue. Where did the welder weld this on this flywheel? Where is that mechanical thing happening? That's proprietary information. I don't think Suzuki's going to tell you. Furthermore, the guys that welded this mechanical pickup sensor on here have also been talking to the guys that made the ECM for this bike. The guys that made the CDI that I've got on this bike, well, they weren't talking to the guys that made this Suzuki Bergman. They were talking to the guys that made a John Deere Gator. They had their John Deere Gator guy weld on their tab wherever they wanted, and the computer knows it. I'm speaking two different languages here, and they're, they're incompatible. This is the only box that knows where that tab's welded. So I need to see if I can convert an ECM into the CDI. I'm assuming this ECM, even though it tells all sorts of neat stuff like turning on fuel pumps and kickstand switches and all sorts of crap like that, in there somewhere is just a few basic functions just like a CDI has. So that's why even though all bikes share the 10 to 12 degrees idle, 30 to 34 degrees above, you know, so many RPM, they all share that timing, but they're not compatible because the timing advance is based on how far they retarded the ignition timing in the uh, CDI. Don't know where the starting point was. So that's what keeps these things from using each other's CDIs reliably. I've got one side of the coil going to the CDI where it says coil positive goes. I've got the other side of the coil going to ground. The wacky thing is I've tried it with this one going to continuous positive, this one going to signal. I flip-flopped them. I've tried this one going to continuous positive, this one going to signal. I flip-flopped them. I've tried this one going to signal, this one going to ground. I flip-flopped them. Put this one to signal, this one to ground. All four different positions and I get the same exact results every time. I don't understand how a coil can work if it's going to the battery or if it's going to ground. That makes no sense. So I've got another wiring harness back out. I found this pin diagram online of the individual pins. I can never get a connector on those. So what I'll do is I'll take the original harness, figure out which one of these wires go to the coil, to the pickup sensor, the ground, and which ones go to positive. There shouldn't be that many wires that I need. The problem is, some of this stuff, like, I don't know, tip over switches, blocks this information. I have to fool those pins into thinking that the bike's not tipped over. I think those sensors are just going to block power coming into this system. As long as I run power into the system and ensure power's coming out to the coil, then it should work. Well, that did not work. I don't know if this ECU's bad. I don't know if my wiring's bad. Using a five-wire CDI box, different kind of box, same results. Idle's fine. Starts right up. Give it gas. The same results with the five pin CDI. Pickup coil has a resistance of 260 ohms, so that should be good. I'm getting about five volts AC when idling off the pickup coil. Also, the coil, I have no idea how to test, so I swapped it out with a GY6 coil, ran the exact same way. I'm getting the right AC volts out of the stator um, into the regulator. Regulator's giving me 14 plus volts while idling. Oh, I've even tried it with CVK carburetors. Still the same. If any of you guys know what's going on with it, or what I should try next, let me know. I'm not real sure, other than taking that flywheel off and re-keying it, which I have no idea how I'd do that. It's a 360 degree guess, and that may not even be the problem. So as of now, I'm gonna mothball this project. I can look at the bright side. I've got a clean titled Mad Dog front end that fits a Bergman engine. I can start my quest again of looking for a crashed Bergman that runs, I can continue on with this project. One thing I would not do is sell it to someone and tell them that it runs good.